In 2023, Stade de Doms were in a 19-game unbeaten run with the youngest manager in Europe's top five leagues. It's just a feel-good football story you live for. It's so good that I used it as an opening line to a girl on Tinder and it left her speechless. Y'all could say I got W Riz. This man is literally playing career mode in real life, and I love it for him. Honestly, I can't get my head around a bloke called Will Steele shouting French from the sidelines, so we're attempting to recreate the magic and take this club to the very top. Find us 100k a game. We don't care, UEFA. We're letting this man cook through FIFA 23. William, he's one of us, a self-proclaimed football manager enthusiast. Gifted, I play FIFA career mode. If only my achievements could get me a real-life manager job, that would be a dream come true. They're a side that really need no introduction. I'm sure you've all heard about them recently, so we're taking them over with William himself until we bag a Champions League title at the Stade Auguste de Keep in mind that Roms have been one of the most successful clubs in France, winning the league six times, being successful in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. Currently, they're in a major drought, and the fans have been waiting for some big-time success for decades. Some marquee talent in the site include Arsenal Loney, Flon, and Balogun, who I'm hoping we can secure on a permanent move. Even though knowing nothing about them, Matusiwa and Lopi look like a decent midfield combination. And 19-year-old center attacking midfielder from Mali, Dumbia, could be a diamond in the rough. This hidden gem could lead us to greatness, but for the rest of the team, I'm looking for a brand new left back, center back, rehauling the defense and trying to rebrand the system to be more focused on youth. Speaking of transfers and signings, we've been gifted about 12 million pounds in the budget to spend. So don't expect any bombastic deals this season. We're gonna have to snap up some bargains and hope we can attract some smart buys. Another area of recruitment I'm sure we'll still will have a high interest in is the Youth Academy and we've got our homegrown talent to look forward to. Hello, it is Paul Ferry standing at a whopping 5'5". Five five. He's a short king. I initially thought could be the next Paul Pogba but it's looking like he's the next N'Golo Kante with 5 star weak foot, 4 star skill moves, 94 aggression. This man is going to be like a little pit bull in the middle of the park with 79 to 94 potential. Everything about him just screams future your first team baller, so we're promoting him to the senior team. Meanwhile, for everyone else, I don't think they're going to have the same fate. We might as well just bring up German Lozano as a backup third string keeper. For the others, they're going to be languishing in the youth academy for a while. In terms of the tactics side of the game, here is how Will Steele's red engine will be operating. In defense, they're pressing after possession loss, and in offense, we're actually going with a bit of a direct route, with direct passing and slow build-up being the main pillars of their attack. It's a weird situation we've been thrown into with Will Steel because a lot of players are currently out on loan, like Hugo Ekatike, who is a Karimo gem, Gravilon out on loan at Torino, Kebal out at Paris FC. We're going to have a bunch of players coming back for season two. Currently, the club are fighting for European places, so it would be a dream to actually replicate that in season one of this rebuild, but enough of the admin work. Let's get these objectives done and kickstart this French revolution with Steel at the helm. I made it clear that upgrading our defense was our main priority headed into this season, and we are kick starting things off, not wasting any time and recruiting a brand new centre-back talent from Argentina, from Vélez Salzfield, the World Cup champions, are coming through with a hidden gem talent here. It is Valentin Gomez for £2 million plus our ageing captain. The Algerian with the armband will be headed the other way in a little bit of a trade deal as we inherit a long-term defensive rock. Our future superstar defender has arrived. That 19 years of age is showing great potential and he'll be slotting straight into our starting eleven. Can also do a job at left-back. He's going to be here with us all the way to the end. So welcome to the club, Valentin Gomez. Center back and left back with the two target areas that I was seeking to improve. And we've gone with the budget option here. We've decided to recruit in Germany and go after a Borussia Dortmund second team player. I've never really heard of him before, but he's popped up on Will Steele's radar and the scouts have recommended him to us. He becomes a brand new Stade de Rennes player arriving in France. The Prince aiming for 900K. We got him for his value and it's an A grade deal in my eyes. He's one for the future as he He'll definitely be taking over Smet's spot at left back. Give him a season or two. And the Dutch exciting prospect will surprise. I'm sure of it. Says it can also do a job at left mid. The sky is the limit for Rem's new prince. After two defensive arrivals, we finally have a sale to report on. And we have to say goodbye to the Kosovan winger Zanelli. He'll be departing to Borussia Mönchengladbach for £3.55 million. Pounds, and that's a decent chunk of change to add to the budget. The English manager has also identified a brand new goalkeeping target. This time 
are from Portugal rather from Benfica. And no, it is not our favorite Rui Costa that we've used so many times in FIFA 23. We've gone for a fresh, brand new added one, the kid here in career mode. We've chosen Samuel Suarez for 1.7 million pounds on the dot. In aim to future-proof the spot in between the sticks, we need a competent shot stopper. And Samuel has taken over that number one, showing great potential, which is always a plus, And he could take over Juf if he's not careful. Another aging veteran who we've decided to let go of and we don't see really part of our future first team plans is a striker. I've got his name, Kai Sergius, off to Philadelphia. We'll be joining the MLS for 1.9 million pounds. And the undercover wonder kid who will be on the rise in the next few years, the Aussie, will be out on a two-year loan deal to Rocheng Yaya Dukuli. You never know, in search for more game time, the youngster could come back a changed man. We're officially making this our last signing of the market. I don't want to change the team up too much here in season one, but considering we've basically restructured the entire defensive department and the only position that was yet to improve was that right back spot. We've gone for a homegrown option here. It's arriving from Germany, Kilian Sildilla. We agreed the deal for four million pounds and I'm happy to sign off on that one. The young star, he just looks like he fits in straight away. Our brand new number six, he's already wearing red in his profile photo. So he's showing great potential at 20. And there is something about all these signings where we're just attracting all these versatile kings. He can play right back, center back, and even right mid for Christ's sake. And his sideshow Bob Escafro is glowing brighter than my future right now. So welcome to the club, Sildalia. It was only right with our rapid influx of defenders arriving to the club. We had to get rid of run. And the one that bites the dust is going to be the Belgium Fockett. Thomas will be joining Rayo Vallecano in Spain for just over two million pounds. With no other plans to sell any more players, we're keeping the roster at 37. And that leaves us with a decent chunk of 11 million pounds to either save up for January or just bring with us into next season. We're doing our best and attempt to keep the club at a financial stable level considering they're paying a fine every single game we are playing. 22k out of the budget. So we've got to keep the financial sector of the board happy. Otherwise our head might be on the chopping block. Here is how the starting team is now looking with all those summer additions involved. We have brought in Anning, Gomez and Sildilia into the back line and arriving on the bench will be our homegrown talent Ferry who are converting into a cam and Suarez our backup shot stopper. Newly appointed captain Lopi will be taking the captain's armband for season one. Let's push for mid-table or hell, even get some European qualifications. I'm incredibly keen as it looks like we're building solid foundations for what is going to be an epic journey. Okay, that's throwing a spanner in the works. I wasn't really expecting Stad Rene to win the league, but here we are with 74 points. It came down to the last day in a five-horse title race, probably with one of the best season finales in France for a long, long time. But where did Bill Stills lads end up in 10th? All right, that's it. Smack bang in the middle of the table with 54 points. They clearly avoided that relegation battle where it was Angers, Stad Brestois, Toulouse and Ajaccio. All to go back down to Ligue 2. Meanwhile, over in the Coupe Nationale it is PSG up against Marseille in an old-fashioned derby. As we all knocked out to the eventual finalists in the round of 16 of 4-2. It's been a solid start to our league campaign and our domestic ambitions, but we're going to have a few hurdles to jump over as we transition to our second campaign as Flotta and Balogun was our top goal scorer. However, that he will be departing back to Arsenal. Do we make his move a permanent one? Do we go all out and sign the 21 year old? Because he could potentially be up top with Hugo Ekatike who will be returning from PSG as he scored 10 goals and 5 assists in the capital. We'll also be saying farewell to Loni Mayolida, the Frenchman with 6 goals and 3. Meanwhile, our captain from Senegal, Lopi, 5 goals and 3 assists for him as Zimbabwean Tank has been converted into a centre back. He got himself 4 goals and an assist as Paul Ferry, our homegrown talent. He made his mark and got into the mix with a plus five overall boost, three goals and four assists off the bench and successfully converted to a cam. We'll be welcoming back a herd of brand new players who'll be returning to the club on their loans. So yeah, our roster is about to get even more hectic as Juf in between the sticks, our current number one with seven clean sheets in 37 appearances. Our charge towards domestic dominance is actually further away than we once anticipated. However, we have so many decisions to make come season two. Will still, with his first full successful season in charge of Rams. How can he evolve this team and take it to the next level come this second transfer market? As this season, we've been gifted with a transfer budget of £21 million. Pounds. A decent chunk of that is going to go towards recapturing Balogun if we can even afford him. But it's nice to be rewarded for our efforts last season, getting a cheeky £10 million more than season one. We're getting down to business early in this one. We are wasting no time for season two. If we start farewelling a few players, we want to get our financial situation on point. We need to get a few more funds in the 
piggy bank if we want to go out and make those moves and bring Balogun back so that means Mitchell Van Bergen will be departing to Leicester City for 6.8 million pounds he joins the Foxes in the Prem good on him the sales don't stop there as we've had a striker return from his loan spell but considering Balogun's return to the club Ekatike's return from his loan spell Rams has no room for coffee up front in Dri Felipe will be off to America LAFC acquire his services for 2.8 million pounds it's just a quick fire sale out here at Stade de Roms. Will Stills gonna get used to this departure walk as we sell yet another Kosovan two seasons back to back. It is Berisha. He's arrived from his loan spell back from Melbourne City, a city which I've recently visited. If you check out my Instagram, quick little plug there. But now he joins Al Nasir, linking up with Ronaldo in Saudi Arabia for two million pounds. Now, thanks to that rapid trio of sales, we can welcome back our top goal scorer, the English sharpshooter that can guarantee us goals under Will Stills' guidance. We're bringing him away from Arsenal where he grew up in their youth academy and he's back with a vengeance grabbing that number 11 and becoming our record club transfer fee. Agreeing a deal with Mikel Arteta for 23.3 million pounds, he's arrived back at an 80 overall. We'll be partnering up top with Eketike to form one of the scariest duos in attack that Europe is going to ever see. We're still working on player outs and we've got a big departure here. Someone who I thought could have found his way into the starting 11 if he impressed me but in season 1 didn't really have that much of an impact it will be could you stay off to Lille for 5.5 million pounds now defense is the department we're continuing to invest in here at Roms as Will still is sought after a main man at the back to partner up with our Argentine it is possibly the next Sergio Ramos could even be his regen he's got the facial hair he's got a massive beard he has a broken ponytail as well all of his looks are adding up to a Spanish hitman Alvaro Chavez a youth academy prospect from Real Sociedad who arrives for 13 one million pounds all five foot eleven of him will be claiming the number 13 jersey i'll be claiming that as six foot he should be as well the 18 year old is showing great potential and he's got all the looks of a cold-blooded killer a defensive warrior who could become an icon here in france another minor sale to report on here just to cut the salary bill down and get the roster to a decent level we force another player to pack his bags and this time it is mustafa and Bo again another player departing to the mls austin fc pick him up for 1.3 million pounds and a ton of our talent being poached by the Americans. We need this money to start renewing contracts and get our financial situation to a, you know, suitable level for the season after we're spending 22k a game just to have Will still in charge of the boys as we have our Algerian returning from his loan spell. It's Rafik Guitain off to FC Laurent for 2.25 million. Unfortunately, the lad's not in our future plans. And the same goes for this guy. He returns from Paris FC, Richardson. You'd think he's English, but no, the Frenchman will be departing to Ghent over in Belgium for 3.3 million pounds. We've been wheeling and dealing behind the scenes in order to pull this one off. It's a statement signing and a player, honestly, I've had my eyes on for a while. I've been wanting to sign him so bad and finally, the right moment has landed in our laps. It's for the Moroccan attacker who's made waves in the championship this season at Burnley under company's guidance. We've been blessed to be able to pull this one off and focus on quality over quantity players this season and it's welcome to Stade Rams, Anas Zarouri. He arrives from the Clarets for 7 million pounds plus our center back who is surplus to requirements heading the other way we say farewell to Agbaru who did us a job in season one it was a sacrificial lamb in order to introduce our brand new number eight a starting left winger I think he's gonna cause defenders all over the league an absolute nightmare and he could also play at striker so he can back up both Balogun and Ekatike up front he's just a perfect player he's a tricky baller for the streets to remember and that leaves us with about five million pounds left in the bank there's your rapid recap of our transfer business we had to deal with a lot of players returning from loan and some assets we had to make a profit on due to our financial situation hopefully that set us up for the years to come we've managed to stay organized and get this roster up the scratch 27 of the lads will be in this rems project we have a bit of explaining to do right here we've had loco who's returned from his loan spell at left back he'll be our brand new starter there as we're training season one recruit anning to be a right winger he'll be a backup for the experienced japanese ito who we've opted not to sell and we've also changed up our formation to the 4 triple 2 which fits Lopi in combination with Ferry in midfield. Balogun and Ekatike lead the attack. Zarawi gets his spot starting at left wing just like Chavez the new boy for season 2. And off the bench we have got options on options. That's how stiff we are for competition here. Focusing on the youth. We've cemented some solid building blocks that I'm so excited to see flourish. So strap yourselves in for one exciting season ahead because Will Still is about to take Ligue 1 by storm. We've seen 
until the end of Season 2, where the lads have gone deep in the cup run. They made it all the way to the big dance against Monaco in the Coupe Nationale. And there was no chance in the world that I was missing out, because not only is it the club's first piece of silverware on an opportunity to win one in a while, but also Will Steele in his managerial career. Here are your two lineups going head-to-head -head at the Parc des Princes in the capital. Can the boys pull through here as we fielded our strongest team up against Monaco? And we get that 1-0 at 105 minute winner in extra time Kebal off the bench who was actually planning to sell in the summer. We've kept a hold of the lad and he's come through in the big games with a big goal. Will steal from football manager to French Cup winner. It's time to bow down to your new French Cup champions as we take a look at the table. We also came through runners up only to PSG who have bounced back in 89 points. They made up for their terrible slump last year and champion Stade Rene falling down to ninth. Whilst Marseille and Strasbourg make the top four at the other end of the spectrum, it's Paris FC, Auxerre, Grenoble, Foot, and Sochaux all going back down to Ligue 2. Not only a piece of silverware to add to the collection, but Champions League qualification, giving PSG a run for their money in the title race as we take a look at our top performers this season, and it's Flodan Badagan this time as a permanent Stadrem player. He's not on loan anymore, and he's gone back-to-back -back golden boot winners with 20 goals, actually sharing it with his strike partner, Ekatike, both scoring themselves 20, but Balagan getting 27 goal contributions and the only player to get double figures in both departments is the Moroccan Marvel 12 goals and 18 assists for Zarawi. That's 30 goal contributions in 38 appearances a signing of the season for sure. Yunya Ito is still providing the experience and quality on the pitch. I'm refraining from selling him for now as our homegrown talent Paul Ferry. He's grown out his hair and he's got that plus five to his overall. Now standing at a 71 the 18 year old with 10 goal contributions. Jebel got us that French Cup winning goal but that was only his third of the season. The Algerian slowly juggling his way back into the team as Mohamed Toure, the Australian off the bench. He was the backup for Balogun and Ekatike. Three goals and ten appearances and our captain Lopi with two goals and one. The growth and development in this side is astonishing and Will still seems to be getting the best out of these lads. Yevian Duf, who has locked on his position for a number one spot. 78 overall, seven clean sheets. The three boys occupy the top spot when it comes to market value. Anas Zaruri topping the lot. They 39.5 million pound price tag. From 10th in the league, the ginger mastermind has shot this club up to runners up and getting himself a Coupe Nationale along the way. That's a spectacular season if I've ever seen one and pretty much the most successful campaign the club have had since the 50s. Watch out Europe because the Red Machine are about to make their debut in the Champions League. Following a meteoric rise to Champions League qualification, the board have gifted us with 42 million pounds in the bank to go ham with. It's still going to be a tough time to attract the type of talent we want, but it's going to be a challenge nonetheless, and we're up for it. Hey, we're in the big boy competition this year. We've got to not only improve our depth, but quality, and our first area of attack is actually improving our attacking forces. João Pedro, the Brazilian, arrives from Real Madrid, as Will still was barged into the Real Madrid offices, negotiating with Carlo Ancelotti, and he's bringing the South American to Roms. A perfect super sub-esque player. I feel like he can bring that Chicharito kind of vibe, arriving for £28.5 million pounds on the dot. The former Watford star boy picks up our number nine and is also going to provide a little bit of depth on the left-hand side for our Moroccan. He's also got a real game face scan, which played a major part in our signing him, but he can play a left mid as well. He'll be a rotation player for now, but we just needed an upgrade on Toure as our backup striker. It was our French Cup hero last year who single-handedly won us the final after his 105th minute goal, but it's time to say goodbye. The Algerian actually had a transfer request submitted, and therefore we've just had to go ahead and sell him to raise a few funds. It is Ilian Cabal now departing to Real Betis for 14.5 million pounds. Farewell, son, you'll forever be in the ROMs history books. We're continuing in attempt to nurture our young talents who are on the fringes of the squad and need some more game time under their belt. And we're continuing this loan system we've got going on as Yaya Dukuli, the Aussie, is now out to CD Lugo on yet another two year loan spell. So farewell, lad. We've identified that our Japanese main man Ito isn't getting any younger. We need a brand new marquee starter for that right hand position. We've decided to recruit a fellow Frenchman. We bring him back to the homeland. It is Michel Olise. I've once confused him to be English in a previous video so I guess this is me making up for that mistake. We've rescued him for the German outfit RB Leipzig as we've included Alexis Phillips in the deal plus 19.4 million pounds so that is a cheeky swap deal as we couldn't afford his buyout clause. We had to make things do and get this deal over the line in the only way we know how getting those successful swap deals through and the 22 year old he's got the keys to the key 
kingdom. He's the heir to the throne. As soon as Zaito's ready to hang up the boots and he starts declining, Olise will be ready and up for the challenge to take on those right wing duties. Big William, he's been trying to get this deal over the line all summer and considering we've drained our entire transfer budget, we've started to look at the free agents category to see what kind of deals we can spark up. And we've deviated from what we'd usually go for. It's Pierluigi Golini who's been released from Spurs and the Italian shot stopper is on the market. I know it's going to be a short term signing in between the sticks. I'm looking to make things official here as the only thing we can afford. After some straggling and scraping the bottom of the piggy bank, the 29 year old will be arriving here in France on a free. We've given him the opportunity to bring his career back to light as he'll provide some valuable experience and wisdom in the locker room. I told you our transfer budget was dwindling down and we've got about £39 left in the budget after that deal. We have pretty much drained it entirely this summer. On the eve of our league on campaign kicking off, we're finalising Golini's arrival and also saying farewell to Czech Kieta off the Benfica on a two-year loan deal again. We're trying to get these youth talent minutes abroad. It's a new and improved squad all over the park as Golini will take up that number one spot. Now our highest rated shot stopper as Mikel Olise will take over Ito. We put in our faith in him as the Frenchman will take over this quartet in attack, all 80 plus rated, whilst new boy Joel Pedro will be a fearsome option in and off the bench. It's the moment we've all been waiting for, where Will Stills lads get their name read out of the bucket. Stad Rems have been drawn into Group A alongside Real Madrid, RB Leipzig, Olise's former club, and Young Boys. I gotta admit, it's a baptism of fire in Europe. It will be an absolute miracle if we make it out alive. The league on season draws to a close for our third campaign in charge here, and it paints a similar picture to last time out. We lose the league title to PSG, and they have just completely dominated again, making this a Farmers League, but we are trying to challenge them for that throne as we accumulate our highest points tally ever. 82 points, runners up again, and I have a feeling we're going to be saying this a lot throughout this rebuild. However, it is what it is. As we scroll towards the bottom end of the table, it is Clermont, Foot, Dijon, Metz, and Lorient all facing relegation. We did beat our PSG in one competition though, and that was the Trophée de Champions, the French Super Cup, where we took it out 2-1. A second piece of domestic cup silverware to add to our cabinet as we failed to defend our Coupe Nationale in the quarterfinals, losing out to San Etienne 2-1. I think we've just got to call this the no UEFA Pro license to glory. Just imagine if these guys actually qualified in real life. What kind of fees would Rems be able to fork up as they finish through in third Group A, which proved too tough. Seven points accumulated, too many draws, and they were then relegated to the Europa League. We're in the preliminary rounds. They were knocked out to Fiorentina 3-3 on aggregate, 5-4 on penalties. Their European run got cut short, but hey, at least they've got a bit of champion League and now Europa League experience under this young side's belt. After those kind of performances on the pitch, failing to reach the Champions League quarterfinal and failing to reach the Europa League final, the board's current confidence status in us is weak, but let's hope we can prove them wrong. We've finally built up a decent backup brigade team sheet behind the scenes. Let's take a look at the team's top performers who are carrying this side, and of course it's the Englishman up front. Our faithful number 11, Florian Balogun, with 40 goal contributions, 34 goals, the Golden Boot winner, three years running. And there is no stopping this man as he's left Arsenal. His career trajectory has only gone up as Hugo Ekatike. He's putting up decent numbers too, but he's getting outshunned by his strike partner. They're both now in the mid to high 80s, just like Anas Sarawi, our Moroccan Marvel. The top playmaker in the side as well with 9 assists, 16 goals to his name as Michael Elise in his debut campaign at Rams. 6 goals and 2 assists for the Frenchman returning to Ligue 1 as Joao Pedro in and off the bench with 5 goals. Junior Ito still proving why he's a reliable squad member. He's still kicking on at 32 years of age, 4 goals and 5 assists, as our captain Dion Lopi with 3 goals and 5. And Valentin Gomez absolutely exploded in terms of his growth, receiving upgrades for that game time, 44 appearances, a goal and 3 assists from the back. Our homegrown talent from day 1, Paul Ferry, kind of took a back seat this year. His dynamic potential might be downgrading because of it, as Pierluigi Golini on a free got us 2 clean sheets in 24 appearances. Now our highest valued asset is Zaruri at a whopping 93.5. 5 million pounds as Balogun our top goal scorer right behind him at 90 mil. We live to fight another day. The board has kept us in the hot seat and the will still dream is still alive. There's your wrap up of our season. Probably one of our most successful campaigns to date fighting and battling on multiple fronts. Confidently doing so at that. Now we head into season four qualifying for the Champions League back to back and this club looking in better shape than ever to achieve world domination. Our transfer budget this year now thanks to our efforts last time out has been upgraded. We've been awarded just over 62 million pounds to slash this summer. I'm not gonna lie, in our opening three seasons we've had 
quite the turbulent goalkeeper situation. So after renewing a whole bunch of contracts behind the scenes, we've decided to make it our top priority this year to get in a brand new number one, a quality starter that is going to protect the goals, get in between the sticks and record some clean sheets. It is Meslier arriving from Leeds. We are bringing him back to the homeland as Eliane will join us for 14 million pounds plus our free agent signing last year, Golini. None of this half-half nonsense. We want a full-time rodeo. We strategically included Golini as a pawn in the deal and that's pulled off a brilliant swap deal as a 25-year-old arrives on a permanent basis. I know what you're thinking right now. You can't believe that Will Steele has gone after yet another defender. He's not just a defender at that. Trevor Chalaba can also play in the midfield and, you know, prove to be a depth utility player. We can rely on when injuries and suspensions get the best of our starters. Thanks to Will's uh, English roots, we've recruited a couple of Premier League gems and that includes this Englishman for £20 million pounds on the dot. He arrives from Chelsea, links up with his fellow countryman Balogun in red. He joins us on a three-year deal. The versatility speaks for itself. Centre-back, CDM and CM. We're hitting the European competitions back-to-back -back as this is how our Champions League group is looking. Drawn into Group D alongside Chelsea, Benfica and Sparta Praha. So Chalaba's coming up against his former side. No group of death for us. We should be qualifying out of this one. Those transfers left us with a financial situation of just over over 10 million pounds in the bank and in today's market in this economy you can't really be spending that to upgrade this team so we've kept things pretty much the same everyone has kept their starting positions besides the off in between the sticks it's crazy to think how we can score 94 points in a season and still miss out on the league title that's right PSG pip us out on the last day by one point the league has been lost and it was the clearest two horse race you've ever seen third place Leon with 24 points away from us so it just goes to show how much these two sides are dominating the league. As domestically, we're pretty much on par with PSG towards the bottom end of the table. Is their crosstown rivals Paris FC getting relegated alongside Ajaccio, Auger and Saint-Étienne. It was yet another poor showing over in the Coupe Nationale, losing out in the round of 32, the earliest we've ever been eliminated to Ajaccio for three on penalties. After last year's disaster class getting relegated to the Europa League, this time round, we actually topped the group undefeated. Chelsea with the big disappointments, we make it out alongside Benfica and actually meet Adam Eyes in the round of 16, getting taught a lesson in Europe. Pep Guardiola's Man City dealing us damage 5-1 on aggregate loss. Turns out we went on to actually lose to the eventual champions. The citizens get to hold the Holy Grail. And look who's out here. William, proving that gingers actually have souls. He wins the Manager of the Month award for May 2026. If you haven't caught on already, we've decided to give the captain's armband to Elise just because I want to see someone with a game face standing in the menus. We take a geese at season four's top performers. Who were the main protagonists in this side? And of course, it is four years running. He's just keeping up the tradition. He knows how to find the back of the net. Balogun with 35 goals and six assists. Our English marksman. That brings his tally up to 41 goal contributions in 44 appearances. An average match rating of 7.98, which is outstanding. Michael Elise, 15 goals behind him with 20 goals and seven assists. The Frenchman only getting a one plus overall boost. You'd expect a little bit more with those kind of performances as Hugo Ekatike continues to get outshunned by Balogun. However, we're still grateful with his 15 goals and 5 assists and our Moroccan Marvel getting himself 10 goals and 16, the only player to get double figures in both departments and is one of our first to hit 90 overall. 26 goal contributions got him that plus 3 upgrade and the 33 year old veteran Junior Ito with 6 goals, Paul Ferry in and off the bench with 5 goals and 5, just like Joel Pedro with 5 goals and Kamari Dumbi, a player who's kind of been working in the background, operating with in the shadows. The man from Mali got himself 12 assists and 3 goals from that centre attack and mid spot. We officially converted him. Valentin Gomez managed 5 assists from centre back which is quite surprising. As Meslier, I expected a few more clean sheets there. Only 8 got himself an assist as well. That's earned the French shot stopper a plus 2 upgrade and it's pretty much a 2 horse race between Zarauri and Malagan. Pretty much both within that £123 million price tag and Hugo Ekatike the 3rd player to hit the 9 figure range. We're about to enter half a decade with Will Steele at the wheel. We haven't had the glory of lifting up a piece of silverware for uh, two seasons now. So I hope we can turn that around come season five. We can change our fortunes when it comes to the Champions League. I don't see us spending big on any marquee players, but as we've been gifted with a current transfer budget of 84 million pounds, we have to renew a few contracts, make players happy, going balls deep with the transfer approach of precautionary measures. We've got to improve our depth and backup options. So let's see where this summer market takes us. Here we go. We've got 
our first cap off the rank for season five, and I feel like we've been lacking in depth and cover for the left and right hand wing back spots. So therefore, Will Stills picked up a Premier League target this time, Victor Christiansen, arriving from Leicester City for 22.4 million pounds outright. Another Premier League hidden gem who's been in our shortlist for quite some time now. It is the X-Man City Youth Academy player arriving from Southampton, Romeo Lavia. The Saints have high hopes for the Belgian in real life, but five years deep in career mode, Will Still has chosen him for 24.9 million pounds. Coming through with a 79 overall, he will provide us an immediate backup emergency option if need be. And he's got a game face scan, which is just always a bonus. Now here's the controversial pick. Hear me out. I know I'm thinking long term here, but we need to replace the Japanese veteran Ito, who go down as club legend status, but I've opted for a little bit of a trade here with Freiburg as we pick up Kevin Shader. We've included Ito in the deal plus 15.7 million pounds as the German arrives from the Bundesliga. We have to bid farewell to our Asian star who has helped us out since day one. But Kevin Shader with his fully fledged game face scan and his versatility in attack is the way forward. Thanks to our minimal budget we have left in the kitty, we've gone for a free agent option for a bit of right back cover and Julian Araujo, the Mexicans, who just love being free agents for some reason in FIFA 23. We'll do some smart business here and sign him up as he can pretty much play anywhere on the right hand side. Four new players who won't get any first team action by the look of things but they're here for the ride. Still integral parts of the project as we continue to grow the roster. For the third year on the bounce, we're participating in the Champions League and Group A we've been drawn into here alongside Liverpool, Sassuolo and Payok. We're up against the Greek, the Italians and the English. It's hard to get a read this far into career mode on if that's a tough group or not, but I guess we've avoided some European heavy hitters. Just look at the depth those new signings provide us with two solid team sheets there that we can wholeheartedly put our faith in in order for us to compete in multiple competitions We've trusted the process and the money ball approach with Will still at the helm is about to pay off in dividends It's a sight to behold isn't it? Who thought you would have seen the day Will still with the league on trophy officially dethroning PSG as our boy Ekatike named player of the league But how did we do it though? Of course it came down to the final day as the Parisians were up and down our necks That is that sounds a bit sus but with only one loss all season I guess we deserved it in the end yet another two horse race and we achieved one more point than last year with 95. The rest of the pack is struggling behind us too as Monaco and Strasbourg make the top four. Over getting relegated though, it is Angers, Montpellier, Sochaux and Clermont Foot all at the bottom end of the table and over in the Coupe Nationale. Actually the Trophée de Champions which is the pre-season Super Cup we lost out against PSG but I guess we had the final laugh come the end of the day. Coupe Nationale saw another embarrassing exit this time in the quarters to Stade Bressois 4-3 on penalties. We're not too fussed though, we've already ticked that one off our bucket list as we've arrived here at the Champions League, topping the group again, this time undefeated. 16 points, demolition of our opposition, and again, it is back-to-back -back around a 16 exits, this time losing out the old lady, 3-2. The Bianconeri getting us on aggregate in the home leg, and Milan actually went on to win the final one. Penalties against Real Madrid, 5-4. It was another disappointing campaign in Europe, but you've got to hail your brand new French champions. Stade de Rems winning it out for the seventh time in club history. It's such a monumental moment for the ginger mastermind Will Still as he's got to thank Hugo Ekatike for being the club top goal scorer this season dethroning Balogun finally we've got a new king he gets the golden boot with 33 goals in all competitions Balogun 13 behind him with 20 and 5 meanwhile there are two players to achieve double figures in both categories and that's both of our wingers Mikel Olise and Zarawi with almost 30 goal contributions to their name João Pedro proved himself useful as a decent super sub 8 goals in 19 appearances and honestly we haven't talked about these guys enough, but I'm here for this Lopi Dumbia midfield partnership. The Rams OGs who have been loyal servants from season one, and the Africans just continue to dominate in the middle of the park. Bradley Loco from left back has been absolutely immense ever since his return from his loan spell. Due to our highly competitive midfield department, Paul Ferry, our homegrown talent, hasn't really reached the heights that we were expecting, but he is still getting decent growth, still only at 21. Now for the big dog in between the sticks, Meslier with 16 clean sheets in 49 appearances. That leaves the same three in the nine-figure market range. We have Balogun, Zauri, and Ekatike, all rocking 120 million pound plus price tags. We've achieved all of our domestic success and objectives. Now it's time to zone in and focus up on the Champions League. The border expecting Champions League or bust for season six, otherwise the will still era might come to an end. It's now or never if we want to see this famous French outfit reach the Holy Grail. Now the financial board for this year have thrown the absolute kitchen
kitchen sink at us, offering us 107 million pounds to go ham with. This is some dangerous money, but in the right hands, it could be put to good use. Now, this is the definition of an all or nothing play. Can this guy be the point of difference for our team and, you know, make an impact in Europe? We needed a purchase that was going to show the world that we mean business this year, and I thought we'd go after Vitinha, arriving from Atletico Madrid. He's a PSG baller in real life, but he could absolutely revolutionize our attack in midfield and prove himself to be the missing link, the missing puzzle piece that we've been desperately needing for all these years. 103.6 million pounds. We've gathered every single last penny in order to purchase him from Spain. He's an instant upgrade from Dumbia and his presence alone is just going to give the team so much more of a confidence, morale boost in his prime at 89 overall. I can't believe I haven't signed this guy sooner in rebuilds, but here he is at Stad that Ems. Now, with our tiny slice of remaining transfer budget left, I came across the free agent David Alaba, the Austrian defender, now 35, a career mode fan favourite from back in the day, FIFA 16, he'd always moved to Juventus, now we are bringing him on in the twilight of his career, just as a little bit of a fun free agent deal, because why not, because we can, and just be a valuable role model for the youngsters and youth in our team. Here we go, this is the situation we've been placed in for the Champions League, drawn into Group B, alongside Borussia Dortmund, Atalanta, and Royal Antwerp, so again, a group I want to be top and another this second place nonsense. We've spent the cash now. It's time to guarantee some results on the pitch too. And with no further plans to sell any of our 34 players on the roster, he is our strongest starting 11. We've got Vitinha starting over Dumbia and now thanks to Elise's growth, we have a fully fledged 90 plus rated attack. The front four quadrant is looking as dangerous as it's ever been. We should be able to compete competently on multiple fronts. With Will still sixth stint in charge of the club, we came second fiddle in the league, losing our champions title to PSG of course. Parisians went on to only lose one game and I guess we've decided to focus our efforts on other competitions as we take a look towards the bottom end of the table it was Khan, Grenoble Foot, Saint-Étienne and Strad Bressois all going back down. We picked up way too many draws in the league though as in the Trophée de Champions we got another one to add to our collection winning against Saint-Étienne on penalties. After it was a 1-1 draw that one came down to the wire. Domestically we've achieved all we can now let's take a look at our Champions League efforts this season finishing on top of the pack 15 points us and Borussia Dortmund qualifying out of the round of 16 and progressing through we absolutely demolished Atletico Madrid Vitinha's former employers 7-2 on aggregate an absolute masterclass as we beat the round of 16 curse destroying Man City along the way 4-1 on aggregate making our way through to the semis and that's where we pull through came in clutch with a 4-3 aggregate win away from home to face Real Madrid in the big dance May 2028 and these lads are up against Los Blancos competing for the ultimate prize. A treble of trophies is definitely on as we got the Coupe Nationale final after the Champions League. We're just going to leave this one depending on the result tonight. However, we're up against relegated Saint Etienne in the French Cup final. Nonetheless, before we embark on this mission, we've got to take one final look at the team. The roster that has brought us to the peak of the mountain and back on top of the goal scoring charts is Florian Balogun, a loanee from season one who has became a club legend alongside Ekitike, both with 30 plus goals just know how to find the back of the net and both Zarawi and Elise achieved double figures in both departments. Our front four attack carrying us to glory all with 50 plus appearances. The one and only new boy Vitinha got himself 22 goal contributions in 43 games and Dion Lopi was unfazed by the new midfield competition. The Senegalese midfield operator with five goals and nine. João Pedro in and off the bench five goals as a super sub. Paul Ferry the story continues to go from worse to worse. He dwindles in comparison to our expectations we had of him but the homegrown talent still proven his worth and Meslier with 13 clean sheets and he actually managed a cheeky assist. It's a record breaking five players, five assets that now have themselves at a hundred million pound price tag. The nine figure club is looking exclusive as ever and have played a major part in us getting here towards the very end. Here is your look at the two team sheets going face to face tonight. We're up against the Spaniards. It's the starting 11 you've all come to know and love. No red cards, no injuries as Ancelotti is fielding Valverde, Raspadori and Vinicius Junior in attack, Bentaker, Ceballos and Illich will be in their midfield and it's a defensive unit of Alexander Arnold, Kimpembe, Botman and Cambiazo. Courtois is still in between the sticks. They're going to be looking to send him off on a high towards the twilight of his career. But the boys are warming up, ready for the occasion. Will still currently entertaining the biggest moment in his short managerial career so far. As all of France are behind us tonight, Stade de Rems take on Champions League darlings. 14-time winners now, Real Madrid. And we're hoping the ribbons on that trophy are going to be dazzling with
with red and white. Can the boys step up to the occasion or will the moment get to them? We'll kick things off here as Raspadori gets the ball rolling. Finds Benzakur again and this lovely tiki taka play as Real Madrid in lavender. Vinicius Jr. has tried to take out Chavez early and they're setting the pace, they're setting the physicality. Quick to snuff that one out, Valverde. Bombing down the line. He's got Raspadori inside him. And now Vinicius Jr. Who's looking to take on Chavez again. And he absolutely bodies him. Passes on through the middle. Ceballos. And now it's Valverde. Back to Vinicius Jr. Meslier had to get down at his near post. And deny the Brazilian of breaking the deadlock. Valverde big header needed from our captain Alise. Straight back to the opposition. Lopi misses that interception as Valverde enters the box. Why have we let him roam free in our defender? Not closing him down quick enough. And that's what happens when you give Real Madrid a chance. He drops the Haaland celebration on us. They're feeling confident. They get the first goal of this contest. And it's 1-0 to the Galacticos. I don't know why Gomez didn't charge him down. He absolutely rifles it into the top left-hand corner. And Don Carlo loves what he sees. 17th minute, Real Madrid take the lead. Benicius Jr. now all the way back. And oh, that nearly caught me. Meslier out. They wanted a second. The Raspadori testing him. Courtois. Courtois nearly fumbles at the final hurdle there. Lopi with a brilliant interception. And now all of a sudden, Mikel Olise with the strike. And on his left boot, he absolutely tucks it into the left-hand corner. And he says, voila, have a little, little that Real Madrid. That captain taking charge and grabbing the game by the scruff of their neck. Courtois unsure of himself. Lopi with a brilliant interception. And I don't think he was expecting the shot. Outside of the box, curls it into the bottom left-hand corner. And it's game on. We got one back on the board and we've drawn it level. Now we're in their half. We're in their attacking third. And Ekatiko with the ball over the top. Balogun can't get there. Oh, Lopi nearly got another interception there, but it works out in the end. And Ekatike finds Vitinha. Balogun's onside. He beats the offside trap. He has a shot. And Zarawi put it back in. It's Balogun with the header and it's straight at Courtois. There you have it. We gained a lot of momentum towards the end of the first half. Real Madrid begging for the whistle to be blown. We couldn't take our chances towards the end, but we were running all over them. Second 45 now commences. We want this game on our terms as we get the game kicked off. The Moroccan Marvel tried something fancy. And straight off kickoff, Vitinha sees the run of Elise. He can get the ball on that. He puts a foot on it. And it's offside. Are you kidding me? The boys don't know. They see the flag raise. And Elise, it must have been the smallest of margins. It would have been the perfect start to this opening second. Are you serious right now? How close was that? Ekatike finds Zarawi. And now he's entered the box. Now he wants a piece of it. Courtois not taking any chances and punting it over the crossbar. Elise trying to find a decent delivery here. We've got Balogun who tries the bicycle. Yeah, the audacity to pull that off at a Champions League final. Elise intercepts Vitinha. He's now got options and he'll use Elise to his right. The Frenchman cuts it back. A beautiful little skill move. Balogun with the shot and Courtois has to scurry away to dead it out and it will be forced for a corner. All right, we need another bang on delivery from Elise here. It's another header and this time it's Courtois to get down low. Sees Elise again and what a through ball. All of a sudden it's Elise versus the world. Is there anyone inside? We're trying to wait. The number seven spots out. Vitinha goes for a run and Botman charges him down as Balogun wins the ball back. It's back on over to Ekitike. Can he find a shot? The number 10. Balogun is in the midst. And there we have it. The Englishman in the 88th minute. Are you kidding me? Will Steele's boys. They continue to persevere. Deflection. Block shots. And there's the ginger mastermind getting involved in the celebrations. An 88th minute goal to surely get us over the line. Ekitike shot block. A poor touch from Cambiazo. And the pressure was too much for them to deal with. Our high press completely put them to bed. Not yet. And Balogun, he scored hundreds of goals for this club, but none more important than that one right there. Ten goals in the competition as he hits double figures and gets us into the lead for the first time in this game. Now we're going to park the bus, baby. Ultra defensive. We are not letting this one slip. 90th minute, three minutes of added time. Hope the referee blows his whistle here. Balogun with another option. It's Vitinha off the volley. His shot goes wide. It's not going to matter. A stad that ends. Are you European champions? The fans go absolutely wild. All of France are absolutely loving this as Real Madrid get knocked down a peg. Balogun in the 89th minute. A hero. Build him a statue outside the ground and build one for Will still whilst you're at it. It was a hard-fought match given not the most entertaining for a neutral, but it was that individual moment of brilliance from Balogun to get us over the line and win the chocolates at the end of the night. I love how we didn't just buy heaps of new players and make the team completely different. We had a few OGs in there like Dumbia and Lopi. The players that returned from their loan spells in season two. Balogun making that move permanent. A lot of the deals that we made early on in the rebuild have provided
provided us with long-term success and sustainability throughout the years. The ribbons on that trophy are red and white. Elise will lift it. It was a captain's performance. However, that will be that. We'll wrap things up there. If you guys did go on to enjoy this one, make sure to drop the video a like down below. What other rebuild ideas do you want to see? Or just video ideas in general down in the comments below. Make sure to follow me on all my socials whilst you're at it. Insta, TikTok, Twitter, all that good stuff. Hit the subscribe button. Turn on the notifications so you never miss out on when a new video drops. But as always, I've been Sir BCHD. Have a great day. And I'll catch you guys in the very next video. From the section, I see LA, London, Paris, tour for days. Don't sleep months or month till late. 5 a.m. need to catch a break. Spark up a blend is this lemon haze. Gelato to the chest, got me feeling blazed. EA, I'm in a game. Fuck around you, you might get played. From the section, I see LA, London, Paris, tour for days. Don't sleep months or month till late. 5 a.m. need to catch a break. Spark up a blend is this lemon haze. Gelato to the chest, got me feeling blazed. EA, I'm in a game. Fuck around you, you might get played. I'm trying, I'm trying, I know this life ain't long, but I'm trying. Hiding the tears when I'm crying, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. When someone you love just dips and you don't feel right, but you keep on fighting. You're trying, you're trying, you're trying, you stay in your lane and you keep on grinding. I'm in Spain right now, my mind, I can't lie, but the S is silent. You know that you're going through something, don't want to speak, so you just stay silent. I'm losing my mind, I'm fighting, the mental state is the cause of violence. Writers blocking my plane, game of virus, hoping a plane fly away to an island. From the section, I see LA, London, Paris, tour for days. Don't sleep months or month till late. 5 a.m. near the catch up.